let's say for example that we want to select a red of these vests. Now there's several different ways that we can actually achieve this. But in this case, I'm going to go under Select Color Range. What Color Range allows you to do is select very specific colors within an image. So if I just click once in the red area of the vest, it shows you within this dialog box here, white is not being selected and the black is being selected. I can either be holding down the Shift key or the next time it count over, which is Add to Sample. If I do that and click, it will add to the selection. And as I start clicking around, you can see that it starts adding to that selection. In order to get a better idea of what you're actually looking at, you can select one of these other selection previews. You can go with grayscale, black matte, white matte, or quick mask. Generally, quick mask is the best way to do this. Now, the fact that it's selecting the color red is arbitrary. It could be whatever color we actually selected within the quick mask tool. So once again, if we click the green of the tree, it's going to select the general color that I selected. If I hold down the shift key, it's going to continue to grab parts of green within the image. This is a very quick way of actually grabbing individual colors if you don't want to take the time to mask something out. Or in the case of the green, it's very intricate and you don't actually want to go through the motions of making that complex selection. So, for example, if we click OK, now it made a selection of just the green. And one thing I want to point out to you is that this is actually not the selection of the green. If you see how there's this selection around the outside border, what it's actually saying is everything except that green is selected. It's one of those idiosyncrasies about Photoshop about which uh, color is actually selected. In this case, we just want to select inverse. It'll flip it around so that you don't see those selection out here, which means that the selection will be in here where the green is. So just for the sake of argument, let's click on hue saturation and we bump up the saturation. As you can see, I'm grabbing just the greens. If you can picture it, using the color range tool is a very quick and easy way to make selections with an image. I'm going to throw this layer away and I'm going to do it again with color range. This time I'm going to go through the red and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to start grabbing pieces of the red. Now notice it's going to start grabbing outside pieces around the outside. It does this often and that's okay. All we're trying to do is give ourselves a quick general selection and we'll clean it up within the quick math window after the fact. One thing I want to show you is with this uh, dialog box here, we have this fuzziness and if we increase it, it's going to expand and grow and grab more similar colors to the ones that we've already manually selected. And if we drop it down lower, it's going to grab less colors. Personally, I find that 40 is just a happy number. Click OK. Now we have our selection and as I've said, uh, the selection is on the outside of the red, not inside of the red. So that's actually coming from this dialog box right here invert or not invert. Now sometimes it's just easier to see what you're doing to have that selected. That's all it is as far as the selection difference. But once I come out it's just as easy to go invert and now just are the reds are selected and you can see that by going into quick mask mode. Now remember everything red is being masked out. Everything that we can see is what's coming through. However I find this very hard to work so once again we'll go inverse using the quick key, which is just coming up here, control shift I. So again, just to make the selection, I'm going to go to the brush and make it larger. And I'm going to start pulling away areas that I don't want. Now, this is just the exact same thing as working with the quick mask because we are within the quick mask. And all I'm doing is grabbing just quick general areas of this that I don't want. Now, after this general example, I'm not going to go into any great detail, but this shows you how it works. So that when we come out of the quick mask and we select inverse it, and then I can come in here and under hue saturation, click colorize, and now I can change the color of the red vests to whatever color I actually want them to be. And after I've done that, I can zoom in, go back to the brush, click on the mask, 
and I can further refine that mask this way using the brush and painting it in. Now there is a slightly easier way to do this because as you see I started grabbing pieces and missing other pieces and it's not quite right. So another way to do this selecting the colors that we want with color range go OK select inverse so that we have the right thing selected select modify expand and I'm going to expand this selection by two pixels and essentially all it's going to do is fill in more of these little areas that you can see that little pixel right there that's missed if I expand now it grabbed it and I'm going to select modify feather and you can give it a pixel feather of one or two or something like that so what it does is it takes the hard selection and just softens it and fills in some of the missing gaps so when I do go back into the quick mask mode you can see a lot more of those areas have been selected and once again at this point then you can come back in here with the brush and just kind of fill it in and erase out areas that you don't want now keep in mind that when you are using this tool it's best to use on loose selections and not necessarily tight selections that you plan on having intricate masking on this is really just kind of used for something that is bigger wider or more complex of a selection than you're actually willing to put the time into and if you take your time a little bit and you do it right you can get a pretty good selection out of this and it doesn't have to be something that looks bad. Now when I come out, once again I can go to Hue Saturation, Colorize, and change the color once again, just as an example. And like I did before, I can select that mask and start filling in some of the areas that were missed. And now there's really no easier way to do it. It's not perfect, and it's just a way to give yourself a little shortcut. When used properly, it actually does a pretty decent job.